Uh, so we have a book, and it's <laughs> and the book is actually quite heavy, so you can use it as a weapon. And we already, in the previous talks, actually heard something about the book because Björn here he also wrote an article for the book about the same thing he's been talking about, so inclusion uh, with players for players with disabilities. Uh, and I think the book actually looks quite good, even if I'm saying it myself or not myself, because um, it was Sara Kannasvu who uh, designed, did the graphic design for the book, so we can thank her for the book looking good. So let's give a shout out to Sara. Uh, yeah. There are also many other people who worked, uh, helped out working with this book. So, in particular, I would like to mention Ruska Kevatkoski and Jonne Arjoranta, who helped editing it. And there are also a lot of other people, um, copy editors and proofreaders, and a producer who was Jukka Särkijärvi. So, uh, let's give a shout out to them also. <laughs> And then finally, there's like one group of people who contributed most for the book and without whom the book would not exist. And that's all the authors. So let's give the biggest shout out of all to all the authors of this book. There are more than 50 articles in this book. I would like to mention single one of them, but then we would be here still like three hours from now. So unfortunately, I cannot mention everything. So I'll just mention uh, something. Um, oops. <laughs> I think I'm missing. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, there was last year some talk about missing a streak because there was no book. Uh, so this book would be like the first one of the new streak. But I'm happy to tell you that that's not actually true because there was a book last year. It was a secret underground book, uh, the secret book of butterflies. And I'm happy to tell you that I got the permission to publish uh, some of the content in this book book or like to republish it and if you like that content I think like also the underground book you will be able to uh, find it if you sort of make some effort so you can just go around in Solmukohta and you can be like Psst, uh, I, do you know where I could get some butterfly content and <laughs> I'm sure it will be all right um, yeah so um there's actually, actually, I want to tell a story. A friend of mine who is a university professor, um, he told me this story that he once gave a student a book to read. And the student was like, uh, so how should I read this book? Give me some instructions, young people these days. And the professor was like, well, you start from the first page and then you read until you reach the last page. But I have to say that this is not a book that you read like that because this is a collection of articles. So you can read the ones that interest you. Uh, so one way to find out what interests you is to read the introduction. And there's also an uh, introduction to each uh, section of the book. So you can first read those and find the ones that interest you and then read them. Or you can look at the table of contents. Here we have a part of the table of contents, not everything. And you can see if there's something that interests you there. Um, th this book, there are several like uh, very brilliant analytic academic style articles in the book, but I'm not going to talk about those right now, because I know that the ones of you who are into those will read the book anyway, <laughs> and I'm here to pitch the book, so I'm going to talk about other stuff. 
So there are two kind of articles that we've specified in the book that are um, the first one of them is debate where somebody presents their opinion on a LARP related topic and the other specific category is how to where someone um, tells you or gives you instructions on how to do something. So for example, if you're planning to make your own LARP, you can look at the how-to articles and see if you could find some useful advice there. And as you can see in the table of contents, uh, the debate and how-to articles are marked there visually, so you can see. Um, see them and also you can like one way to read the book is just like browse the book and see if you just happen to see something interesting and start reading and we also marked visually the uh, how to and debate articles uh, there inside the book so we have these uh, ribbons that show how they look so here is an example of a debate piece. It's actually the opening article of the book uh, against design by Andrea Nurval and Gabriel Wieding. And in this article, they argue that maybe we are over focusing on design because previously we thought about LARP as an artistic practice and now we have come to think about it more as a design practice. And I have to say that this article actually changed how I view LARP myself. So go and read it. I won't talk more about it. I won't spoil it. Uh, go and read it yourself when you get the book. Um, here's an example of an how-to article. So it's designing power dynamics between adults and children in LARPs by Frederica S. B. Hoya. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, so uh, we've been designing, like it's a really nice, great article with really good points if you're working with children, designing with LARPs for children, how you can sort of avoid reproducing the real life power dynamic where adults are always in control and how like the children could be in control for a change in the LARP and I'm really happy to publish this because not that much as far as I know has been written about designing for children even though we've been doing it for a very long time and I think there's not that much about it in the LARP design book either even though there's Lot and lots and lots of design wisdom in that particular book. Um, okay, then this might be interesting to some of you. Naked at Nordic LARP by Karin Edman and Julia Grape. And they are analyzing how it is to LARP without your clothes on, like actually totally naked and in what kind of situations it might work and what kind of play you get out of it. Um, okay, there are these different sections in the book, won't mention all of them. One of them is this risks, dangers and brave spaces, where I think we can clearly see that uh, we have talked about LARP safety issues for a long time, but here in these articles in this section, I think we can clearly see that we are moving uh, from framing these issues in terms of safety to framing them more in terms of risk. So there are articles about uh, risk. There are also many very interesting and good critiques about current uh, LARP safety practices or ways of thinking about this. I'll just mention one of them, which is this Rethinking the Danger of Player Age Gaps by Ruska Kevätkoski. And uh, they argue that we've been having this mindset where we think that it's somehow inherently dangerous to play a romantic or erotic relationship if one of the players is much older than the other one. And uh, they argue that, and they present pretty good arguments for it, that it doesn't necessarily have to be so. 
and having this very fixed mindset against this sort of LARP relationships might even be harmful. Um, then we have, uh, there's a kind of mini section in the book, which is like three articles about ecological LARP or climate themed LARP, which I think is um, a very important topic. Uh, the last one of these is the manifesto of playing to live elsewise, because of course we have to have one manifesto in the book. It's like <laughs> our tradition. Um, it's by Maiju Tarpila, and I would say if you only read one article in the book, maybe read this one. It's a very powerful, uh, might make you feel uncomfortable, but I won't say more about this because Maiju will soon talk about it herself. Um, then one more article that I'd like to mention, so if you only read two articles from the books, <laughs> then read the manifesto and this one. So currently we are living in times of war and turmoil in different parts of the world. And because our community is quite large and international, there are also people who are directly affected by this. And um, so this article is about how it is to make LARPs when you're living in a situation of war. And Maria Peterson, um, she interviewed a Ukrainian uh, LARP organizer about how it is to currently organize LARPs in Ukraine uh, where this, this war going on and also a Palestinian LARP organizer about how it is to organize LARPs when there is um, this war going on in Gaza and also possible genocide. Yeah, so with these happy topics, <laughs> I will end the talk. And thank you very much and go read the book as soon as you get your hands on it. Yeah.